In this video, I'm going to talk about tips that I wish I knew as a beginner when I started doing watercolor. And I'm not going to talk about the really obvious things that people cover in one of these videos. I'm going to tell you the 10 things that I genuinely, genuinely wished either I knew at the beginnings or that I listened to at the beginning so that I didn't have to go the long way around, invest a lot of time, money and energy that I didn't need to in the hope that it saves you guys time, money and effort. So it's one of those things of please, please listen because I ignored it and I definitely suffered for it and I really, really want to save that hassle for you guys. First tip is to move to cotton paper as soon as you can. And I resisted this so, so much for so long. I was like, it's way too expensive. I, I'm not good enough at watercolor or I'm too new. I don't know what I'm doing with watercolor to justify paying for cotton paper because obviously cellulose and cotton paper cellulose paper is so much cheaper so i spent like the first two years almost refusing to use cotton paper and always using cellulose paper but i really hit a wall of why can i not paint the way other professional artists are painting and that Usually, if you have a problem with painting and you're not happy with it, maybe the colors aren't behaving the way they should or they're not as bright or they're not. It's just most things, most problems in watercolors can be solved by two things. One, upgrading your paint if you're using student grade. Just pick any professional watercolor. You will always do a much better job of painting with professional colors. It just works better. And the second is to move the cotton paper. And I really, really resisted this because cotton paper are very expensive. And I still resist doing this even now. And I do this as a business and I do this professionally. So what I do is like a 50-50 divide of using cellulose for when I'm exploring ideas and I'm just planning, playing, I don't know how it's going to turn out, then I do it on cellulose paper. And then when it comes to final pieces, I will do it or important pieces or pieces that I'm going to give to somebody, I will do it on cotton paper and also if I know there's going to be lots of layering and I just want a better control of how the painting goes I also use cotton paper and that has definitely taken some weight off my shoulder about using cotton paper because at the beginning when you hear it it's like oh you have to do everything on cotton paper and you don't you can have a range of different kinds of paper you can have cellulose a cellulose cotton blend a cheap cotton paper or an expensive cotton paper and just use according to what suits the situation and what makes you feel relaxed enough to be able to paint Second tip I have for you that I wish I knew as a beginner what is to use the same brush as the teacher if you're struggling with what they're trying to teach you. I took a course called by a wonderful lady called Yao Cheng and she does several courses and classes of on creative bug, not affiliated with them or anything. I that's where I started. It's a great story start if you don't know where to start with watercolor because they have really easy beginner courses but she teaches like floral paintings and they're beautiful and like soft and kind of boho and relaxed but I didn't really know about brushes and I just used the brush that I had because I believe that you should just start with what you have and I was fine with other classes but with her class I just wasn't getting the result that she shows on the screen obviously that's partly lack of experience but then later on much much later on i you know i did that course didn't feel great much much later on i tried the brush that she was recommending and i could get the look like that and that's when i realized if you are struggling to get the effect or the look or the technique that a teacher is teaching 
and you're okay with recreating other classes but if you have a particular problem with one style then try using the same brush as what the teacher is doing there is a good chance that that teacher relies heavily on a particular brush to create the look that they can create with it i wish i knew that <laughs> that would have saved me um feeling really awful that i couldn't do a simple looking thing that this lady was just churning out like it was nothing so if the paper isn't a problem if the paint isn't a problem it's probably the brush buy one of the brush teachers recommend a whole load of their usually their own brand brush with their name on it it's really expensive just buy one give it a go see if it's the brush that's do, giving them that edge that you're wanting to get the third tip that I wish I knew as a beginner is don't listen to the don'ts. There is a lot, a lot of teachers that uh, teach classes, both in face-to-face -face and on videos that will use the word don't do this or don't use this or don't, don't, don't. And one of the things that I make a big effort in my videos and hopefully it comes across is that there's no such thing as a don't in art all there is is something or whether it's pain or technique or something it's either going to be suitable or more easy to recreate the particular look that person's going for than some other technique other techniques will make it harder to do a particular look that you're going for or other tools will make it harder to recreate the look you're looking for but that doesn't mean you should never use them i hear people go you should never use black you should never use white you should never use this and that and that and it's just wrong they should be saying if you use this then it's going to be harder to recreate this or if you use that then you're going to struggle so use this instead but there is a place for every art supply it's somebody will find it useful and that's how i try to construct my videos even if i don't like it or if i don't think it's good i will still say but there might be a niche there might be a person that's looking for that niche that can be filled with this art supply. Also, things like classic rules, like rules of thirds and stuff can be completely broken. There is an amazing, stunning piece by Hoxai that breaks the rule of thirds and it's it stops me in my track. It's the most amazing thing. So you can completely break rules. I try not to learn rules because then I get really bogged down by it and I start thinking logically whereas I want to personally paint from feel and instinct so that's why I don't follow rules or try not to gather too much of them but for somebody who wants to be very precise and want to do academic drawings and paintings you have to follow rules so yeah just don't let somebody tell you that you can't do something or you shouldn't use something. Go use it, go break it if you're interested in that and see whether you like that effect or not. Fourth tip that I have for you is that the kind of artwork you enjoy consuming, seeing, owning might be different from the kind of artwork that you enjoy creating and this was a thing that really really stumped me as a beginner because I really love portraits I when I go to galleries I love looking at the portrait I love looking at Van Dyck he's my favorite portrait artist and I think is absolutely amazing I love looking at photorealistic stuff as well however I learned through my journey that I absolutely hate doing any academic kind of drawing or painting or anything like that. It just, the process is so boring to me. It's so draining to me. I do not enjoy it. I don't feel fulfilled by it. I don't feel energized by it. But because I really like seeing portraits and accurate drawings and really detailed stuff, 
I kept forcing myself to try them as going, oh, what's wrong with me? You know, I'm re I get really grumpy when I do something that I really enjoy seeing on the wall. And all it turned out was that what I appreciate from others creating is not the same as what I like creating myself. I really like loose paintings, abstract paintings, quick, fast, instinctive. Most of the time, I'm not even looking at an object. It's not even a painting of an object. I have nothing. I just have color. I have techniques. I have ideas and I just go for it. That's the kind of art I like to create. And I just wish that I gave myself the permission and the freedom to just accept that those are two separate things of taste and what you uh, enjoy, what you enjoy to create are two separate things and they don't have to match and that's okay. It's actually quite nice because then you get to buy artworks that you can't create but you really enjoy while being able to create your own style of art that other people can enjoy. Fifth step is to swatch your paints on the same paper that you're going to be doing say the final piece or the paper that you use the most because colors can look different depending on what paper you swatch and i have a really good example for you this was the burnt sienna episode from my closet color showdown season two and this is on a very very cheap paper and i test colors on cheap paper so that you can see how it handles cheaper paper. So if you're a beginner and you can't afford to buy expensive paper, you still can see how the paint of your choice is going to perform. Whereas the more expensive a paper you get, the more stable a paint's going to behave and more, more well behaved it is. But what I want to show you guys is these colors look pretty similar on this paper. However, I then swatched the same colors on a cotton paper this is Saunders Waterford paper and look how different the colors look compared to this looks pretty even and these you can see huge difference in characteristics right so this is why I say swatch on paper that is going to be your main paper that you like to use or the one that you want to use uh, for your final pieces because they look so different right yeah now i this is one of those rules that i don't follow myself but that's because as a job i have to create thousands of swatch cards so when i make these i just use a cellulose paper the bockingford one because it's affordable but if you're just doing swatches for yourself you don't need to go down in paper grade so much so if you do have a particular brand that you like to paint on then definitely create swatches cards using the same paper because otherwise you might see a huge difference once you put that paint on the paper the next step i have for you guys that I kind of followed and I'm really, really glad I followed, which is to try brushes and paper that scare you. And by that, I mean, like, if you use only small brushes, try big brushes. If you use standard round brushes a lot, but you've not ventured out into weirdly shaped brushes, or maybe you like cold press paper that behaves well, but they are much bumpier kind of paper. I had a lot of fun trying out lots of different paper a couple of years ago for a 30 days in the studio series, which I will link up here. And it was so much fun. And the paper that I remember the most is Jackson's Eco watercolor paper, and they are bumpy. They are like, did you not straighten or flatten this paper at all? But I had so much fun with it because it was, I, I felt like I was having a collaboration with the paper rather than me just painting on the paper because the paper is going to dictate what you can do and it's not going to create the line you want, but it's line that's really refreshing. And I'm not saying, hey, if you do tiny miniatures, you need to start creating pieces with larger brushes. It's not about that. It's about 
trying different things that scare you a little bit so that you can see how your lines and your shapes and your colors can change with the materials you use because how we paint is vastly affected by the materials themselves and to just stick with what you know I personally feel really stifled by it. I always want to find out new things. So I personally like just push the boundary. Seventh tip I have for beginners that I wish I knew is to start off with fewer paints. I know it's super tempting when you get into watercolor to buy like a big box set of like 48 colors. And I totally did that. So I am not in any way shaming people who do do that. Go right ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. But what I did experience from that was a huge amount of overwhelm because there were so many colors and I didn't know what to do with them. And even though I kind of know myself enough to know that I'm not gonna listen to this rule if I go back to my past me and go now now just buy a small set of maybe like 12 colors and, and you know see how you feel get to know the paint enjoy the paint and then you can add i'm i'm not gonna listen to that but i'm hoping that somebody out there will so that i can save you from that horrible feeling of overwhelm i had when i bought that first set of 48 colors and i just didn't know what to do with them if you do want lots of colors though, I would recommend not getting a set, but going to an art store and just buying tubes of colors that you're interested in, because then at least you're personally invested in those colors. So you will give them a go. Whereas I had 48 colors that I haven't even chosen and I just didn't know what to do with them. I actually, like I swatched them once. And then I didn't know what to do with them. I felt overwhelmed. I never, ever touched that set again. I feel a little bit ashamed about that. But this is what this video is about. So that I can share my shame. So that you guys don't have to gain that shame yourself in your beginner's journey. Next tip I have for you is spend money on paint and on paper. As watercolor professionals, we get asked all the time, you know, I can't afford to spend money getting top of everything on paper paints and brushes. Which one should I invest my money on? And the order that I personally think helps you improve the most is first invest on paper, then good paints, then good brushes. And if you can't do all that, either pick the paints or the paper. I would say the paper because when I see somebody using, you know, the Winsor Newton relatively affordable student grade 48 color set. No, that's not the set that I got that I was talking about earlier. Uh, they're not good paints, but I've seen artists do amazing paintings with them. And in those cases, it's always, always that they're using really high quality cotton paper and a good quality paper can cover up a lot of faults that a cheap low quality paints have so i would definitely invest my money in that first and then i would invest in decent paints because i'm a believer that like brushes can be cheap and uh, there are so many wide variety that we don't need to be paying like an arm and a leg for a sable brush that needs freaking manicuring every time you use it with like the perfect hair treatment, otherwise it's gonna die on you. We don't need that. But what we do need is a good base and good paints. And I get asked a lot, what student grade paints do I recommend? And I don't. It's much more economical to buy fewer colors from professional range because student paint is always going to frustrate you it's going to be pale it's going to be streaky it just doesn't behave well at all and i don't want you to go through all that heartache so get a fewer and like there are really affordable professional brands out there now that does professional quality paints at student grade price point there is Roman Schmal, they are really good professional paints at very affordable prices 
and they are is also Paul Rubens is a new one to me that I've really enjoyed so they are professional ones don't go for student I think student quality paints are just a fallacy and it gives you the illusion of an easier entry point but actually in the long run it, you're going to struggle a lot more and you're going to encounter more disappointments than if you just go for the professional paints this is the penultimate point I have that I wish I knew and I get asked this a lot which is how do you find your style and I can write a whole video essay that's like hours long on how to find style but I just want to give you a quick tip that style is something that other people see in your work and not you. I chat to people and they're like, oh, I don't have a style. How do I get one? And I look at their artwork and it's like, you have a clear style. It's just one of those things that we as creators, it, we're blind to what we create almost. And we don't see what our style is. Whereas other people will find your style like that. So when I make paintings and people go, that's not like you. I'm like, what do you mean it's not like me? Because I don't understand my style, but other people who see my work understand my style and they see it. And that might sound like, oh, you're never gonna understand your style. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you want to see your style, first of all, don't fret that you don't see your style. You're not supposed to see your style. You're too close to it, you're too blind to it. Second of all, if you do want to know what's particular about your style, then let other people talk about what they find is your style and you will soon learn what your style is because that's how it works. You can't say it, other people can, so go and ask the other people. And then you can infuse that in yourself and enhance that in your painting and ha get a stronger style from that. I hope that helps. And my last tip, and this is the one like I really hated when I heard it, but it totally is true. So I'm fine if you get upset at me for me saying this, or if you find it hard to take in, that's okay. I had the same thing, and I'm pretty sure everyone else does as well when they hear this, it is you have to run the mileage in until you become better at watercolor. Watercolor is a technique. It has a lot of quirks to it. And the only way you will learn is by actually, actually painting as many paintings as you can. And they don't have to be good paintings. It's just about the numbers. A lot of people get very focused on getting one painting right. And watercolor, until you're an expert and it ain't gonna do that for you. So it's better to focus on casually painting a few paintings at a time and planning to paint lots and lots of paintings because you will learn something from each one of those paintings. It'll be a little thing and the painting won't be something you're gonna sell, but you will definitely learn from that experience more than if you're trying to get one painting perfect. I find that trying to get watercolor painting perfect is like it's a material that doesn't want to be perfect it's wild it's characteristics it's character form so trying to perfectly control it in one painting is an uphill battle and you are skating uphill on a rollerblade and there's ice on the road you know you're gonna get frustrated if you want to get better at watercolor plan to do many 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 paintings and learn from that journey it is definitely a marathon and it's one that you have to keep showing up to but eventually each one of those paintings will be a treasure of knowledge in your mind and in your skills so that is it for all the tips that i wish i knew or listened to as a beginner i hope that the tips i shared in this video is going to save you a whole lot of pain and disappointment and bad feelings that i had to go through i really really hope that and that's why i'm making this video do let me know in the comments down below what you think of the tips I shared, whether they were useful to you. If you have tips for other beginners that you wish you knew, please share also down in the comments below. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe and share this video. It really helps in growing this channel. So thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next video. Bye!